I should have known better. What's up guys and welcome to my review of Alex Garland's newest film, Men. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see this opening night as I was on my way to Orlando to do the panel that me and Sean Chandler did. Hopefully we'll have footage of that for you guys very soon. But I did want to make sure that I checked this out because I've had numerous comments wanting to know my thoughts, which made me think this is either going to be a movie they want me to rant on or a movie that just has so many things you can question and debate and discuss that they want to see what my take is. I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't know a whole lot about the plot. All I knew was the director, which I loved Ex Machina, wasn't the biggest fan of Annihilation, but certainly really appreciated his filmmaking qualities in that. Just lost me in the third act a bit. And then, of course, I knew the title was Men. Now, I try to give the benefit of the doubt. I mean, <laughs> you look at a poster like this with a really fucked up looking dude and the title is Men and you see that it's A24 and you go, oh, Please don't let this be one of those preachy movies that's just going to annihilate men the entire time in a way that's not clever or entertaining or insightful in any way. Please don't let it be the worst version of what I hope this is. And unfortunately, it pretty much was. And essentially, the story of this movie is that you're following this grieving woman who just endured this tragic event where her ex-husband committed suicide, and she is renting out this little quiet country home to kind of decompress and to heal and to get some peace. And then all of the men in this little country town, all played by one actor, are essentially living out the various forms of toxic masculinity as they project things and mistreat this woman in a variety of ways. And you're just along the ride with her to see how she's going to endure this very strange and sometimes horrific situation. Now, the positives that I will say regarding this film, of course, since it's Alex Garland, it's a very well-directed movie. That's one thing I could never take away from him, no matter if I like the story he's telling or not. The guy is a brilliant director, like with Ex Machina, like with Annihilation. He likes to explore humanity in various ways, and he does carry that through with men. And I will give credit where credit's due as far as creativity, the way that he visualizes things, the way that he decides to explore this theme of toxic masculinity while having some horror elements and having some, some folklore elements in there, it is a unique take on the subject. And that's something that I pretty much always want. If you're going to attack something that is a political debate or a social debate or something that we're all talking about in our personal lives pretty much every single day, whether we want to be a part of that conversation or not, at least do it in a creative way, a unique or an entertaining way. And I thought that the choice to make every single one of the men that the main character encounters in this town all be played by the same actor was interesting. At first, I wasn't quite sure what he was going for. By the end, it started to make a lot more sense to me. From how I interpret things, I imagine that that is there just for us as the audience. It's to kind of visualize the fact that through their behavior, all of these men all appear the same to the main character. She's seen somebody different. There's a reason why she never brings it up in the movie. Why the fuck do all of you have the same face? But for us as an audience, it's just another little creative visual to kind of hammer home the point that they're trying to make. Performances are all great. Not a ton of people in this cast, but you have Jesse Buckley in the the lead role, the lead character, and she's very good. A lot of emotions have to be drawn out of her, and she's very convincing in all those scenes. You've got Rory Kinnear, who was tasked with playing all the various men in this town, and I think he does a really good job as well, because even though he looks exactly the same, he plays all the different characters very differently as far as their accent, as far as their mannerisms, and their kind of body language, and really embodying the different forms of toxic masculinity in a, a way that's convincing, and really does feel like different characters, rather than just the same guy wearing a bunch of different hats. There's quite a few moments in the first two-thirds of this movie especially, where there's these really eerie moments. There are these really eerie, creepy sense of dread going throughout it to where there's not anything overly shocking on screen or anything that's like overtly in your face. A lot of stuff's in the background or you'll have like a static camera with something moving in the distance and a sound effect that pairs with that that really does kind of elicit that sense that something's going to go very wrong at some point soon. And I think they did a really good job with that. That's one of the elements that I love the most about Ex Machina and the elements of Annihilation that I appreciated the most is Alex Garland's ability to do that with the camera. And finally, there was a really cool aspect to the score of the movie to where there's a scene, the main character gets to this 
empty tunnel and she's doing these little echoes to create this music to a certain sense and they repeat the music that she creates throughout the movie in a much creepier way and so it kind of becomes the theme of the movie inadvertently and I thought it was really cool I thought it was a neat creative aspect to bring the theme about because the actress quite literally had to create that music in that scene but it also really added to that sense of dread that sense of eeriness it's a nice really peaceful scene in the movie and then every time you hear that sound repeated throughout the rest of the film it gets creepier. Unfortunately this movie is about as subtle as a brick in the face. Now I'm somebody that I don't have a whole lot of you know reservations or hang-ups or insecurities as far as toxic masculinity or any jokes played at men. If you're creative or you're funny or you're entertaining with it I can laugh at myself. I can laugh at others but when you have a movie like this that genuinely feels like they have this agenda or this message that they're trying to convey to the audience and rather than bring it about in a creative or entertaining way that's digestible for everybody, they just beat you over the fucking head with it like a sledgehammer, that's not entertainment for me. It really just confuses me about what are you trying to convey, who are you trying to reach with this movie? You have three different people that are going to watch this film and react to it. You have team one that is anti-men or really an advocate for toxic masculinity and those people you don't have the reach. They're already right there watching this movie, cheering from the back and just loving everything that you're saying. You got audience member two, which I belong to, that watches this and goes, yeah, obviously you shouldn't hit women. Yeah, obviously you shouldn't force onto them pain for their drink. Yeah, obviously you should believe them if they're telling you that somebody naked is outside their fucking window. Like all the different characters that are being portrayed throughout this movie to show versions of toxic masculinity. Audience B is like, Duh! And by the end, they're just kind of annoyed, like, you're not teaching me anything new here. I already know that. What is your point? And then you have the third audience member who is somebody that probably belongs to any of these various groups of toxic masculinity, and you're sure as shit not going to reach them with how overt you are with your agenda. So what the fuck is the point? Did you honestly think that somebody was going to watch this movie and go, wow, you know what? I do that all the time. Thank you, Alex Garland. I didn't realize I was being a toxic prick. And again, there was a way to convey this, if you wanted to be so overt with it, if you wanted to be so blunt and unsubtle as fuck with the way that you brought this message about, there's ways to have fun with that so that everybody can laugh and kind of enjoy it and get the message but be entertained by the film. But when it just feels like you're sitting at a political rally and having somebody shout in your face with a megaphone some shit that you already know and agree with, that's not entertainment. It would be different if any of these various characters would bring some form of toxic masculinity that I was unaware of or something that maybe only women see that way and men just have this mental block with. But every one of them, I'm like, no shit. You got a guy who's like the white knight that tries to protect her. He's like, oh, no, 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 you don't go out there. I'll do it. I'm, you're not paying for your drink. I'll pay for your drink. Even though she says no like six fucking times. No, 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 no. Your money's no good here. You got another guy that straight up tells her, well, when your husband hits you, did you give him the chance to apologize? Because, you know, men hit women. It happens, but it's not a capital offense. And you're like, what the fuck? And maybe that's just my perspective. Maybe that's, you know, the, the benefit of me feeling personally like I'm one of those good guys that has no desire to hit women or has no desire to be toxic masculine or has no desire to project all of my things onto women or my wife or anybody else that I meet because I'm the one that has to be important here. Like, I don't consider myself to be one of those people. So when I see this movie, I'm kind of like, your message isn't for me. Talk to that guy. I had started to have faith that we were starting to transition out of this little phase that we were in for a while to where movies had to be just really agenda based and things like Black Christmas 2019 that just have nothing else to say except for this one little statement that they're going to beat the living fuck out of you with for 90 minutes. I was starting to hope that we had transitioned out of that, but this is the most overtly agenda based movie that I've seen since Black Christmas 2019. Much better film film, much more creative, certainly a lot more artistic merit to it. But unfortunately, I walk out of this movie and I have the same takeaway that I had from Black Christmas 2019, which is if you have a message, if you have an agenda that you think is important enough to base an entire movie around it, can you not put a little bit more time into being more creative with the storytelling? I was really intrigued with where this was going to go. Once I started to see the writing on the wall with what they were going to be exploring here, I was intrigued with the creative element of having the same face across these different characters. I was intrigued with how her journey in this town was going to loop back around to her experience with her ex-husband and how are they going to explore these themes? How are they going to work it all together into this climax? Is it going to go 
way off the rails and like super high concept like Annihilation or is it going to be more straight to the point like Ex Machina? I was invested, but after about the halfway point, it becomes clear this is a movie that just wants to wash, rinse, and repeat the same statement over and over and over and over again until the credits roll. All right! So unfortunately, guys, I can't really recommend that you go and see this. There's a very specific audience that will find this movie and love it. They probably have already seen it. They don't need my recommendation for it. But if you were worried that this was going to be that type of movie, in my opinion, it absolutely is. And that's just not entertainment for me. So this is my least favorite of Alex Garland films so far. And the only one of the three that I really don't have any desire to rewatch ever again. All right, guys, that does it for me. If you enjoyed this review, please click this playlist over here to check out the rest of my 2022 new release review. Reviews, and I'm also going to put the review for X up here, which is a much better A24 film. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this and want to catch everything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.